<laughs> hey guys, another review. Welcome on my channel. Um, this time it's gonna be Whiteout Wipeout. <laughs> I mean, Whiteout uh, 16 by 19 versus Whiteout 18 by 20. Same design, different string pattern. Can it make a big difference? Maybe. I, I noticed that. A lot of reviewers decided to pick one above the other without even testing the, the other uh, whiteout. Um, and those who actually tested both patterns of the whiteout maybe were focused more on the highlights of the racket rather than direct comparison. And uh, yeah, it's okay to hate a racket a little bit from time to time, right? <laughs> so yeah, let's focus on, on those differences and uh, why you could prefer uh, the 1820 or 1619 version of the whiteout. Let's go. The biggest question among the play testers and uh, reviewers and uh, forum members is which whiteout is more comfortable? Uh, I think uh, for some reason most reviewers said uh, it is the 1820 version that is more comfortable. However, in my case, I would say 1619 was uh, more comfortable. However, it is a bit more complicated to explain uh, because whiteout 1619 very wide string pattern. 1820 relatively close but still quite responsive uh, head size and design um, stiffness 66 right so it is a bit more punchy uh, i mean whiteouts in general compared to let's say tf40 or blade or um, or radical mp white house is kind of a minimalized uh, version of the speed line from head so let's talk about the comfort now when i strike the ball i kind of have sense of what the ball is doing on the string bed and uh, with the 1820 i feel a bit more connection uh, some something is going on Maybe, maybe the 1820 string pattern is making uh, the, the racket feel a bit heavier and more solid. So uh, the, the connection is totally different. Um, and in that sense, the feel is a bit cleaner. While the 1619 string pattern of the whiteout, when I hit the ball on the string, but I kind of feel this lack of solidness, uh, maybe a bit empty feeling, despite the frame and both frames are foam filled. Um, but the overall harshness of the impact is, I would say, uh, smaller than from the 1820, which makes sense because white out 1619 string pattern is just a bit more forgiving. So it's easier to just perform well with it. But with the 1820, yeah, it's, it's a bit more uh, racket to swing. So in short, I would say, uh, there are two levels of comfort, the impact on the string bed and what is going uh, to your hand. And uh, I would say with the 1820, the impact is a bit sweeter, but with the 1619, the overall harshness going down to your hand is a bit uh, calmer. I wouldn't uh, recommend picking 1820 if your main uh, goal is to find a more comfortable racket. Uh, those two are too similar in comfort, uh, but yeah, if I had to, I would pick 1619. So now let's focus on wave distribution. 1619 feels faster and more anemic or empty in stock form. 1820, because of the because it has more strings in it, feel a bit more head heavy. Uh, therefore more solid and stable but still for my for my needs both rackets are too light and maybe even too head heavy however i would say it, it's just my preference it's just adjusting uh, the racket to my swing style nothing really like oh this frame is so head heavy it will uh, take out your arm <laughs> 
no, it's it's okay. But uh, yeah, I just had to customize both rackets to my needs, and I figured that I had to customize both rackets a bit differently. Uh, 1619, I prefer it as a more heavy, more headlight racket, while the whiteout 1820, I prefer it to be lower in static wave, but uh, a bit more head heavy uh, than the Whiteout 1619. And the 1619, while it is a bit faster to swing, maybe it is more polarized um, in stock form. Therefore, yeah, I was just enhancing what is already there. Tried it with uh, leather grip, uh, leather grip and plus five grams module, plus 10 grams module, with leather and models, no leather, <laughs> so yeah, basically everything I could. You just have to experiment and uh, keep an open mind because you never know. I guess for me the only constant is uh, that I prefer a heavier uh, racket. Spin potential obviously goes to the White House 1619 slices, obviously go to the 1820 serves, obviously go to the White House 1619. So basically all the uh, stereotype uh, differences between 1619 and 1820 can be applied here as well. So as I was playing mainly with the 1619 frames recently, yeah, it makes sense that I prefer the White House 1619. Uh, many said that oh, 1619 whiteout has such a high launch angle, I can't control it. Uh, I would say it is okay. In my case, as a 6019 uh, user, I would say the launch angle is quite comparable to the Angel DC95, maybe Vicor 98, but, but uh, the crispness of the racket gives me more sense of control what I'm doing with the ball. It's not like the pocketing and dwell time is so huge and then the big launch uh, happens and you don't know what is going on. Uh, because the frame itself is a bit stiffer and crisper, you kind of feel this direct response from the string bed. And yeah, it is a bit higher above the net, but uh, nothing uh, extreme, I would say. But if you are worried, you can you can put uh, 130 gauge strings in it, just like I did. Uh, I tried it with uh, Solinco Turbite 130 and Solinco Confidential 125. Both worked well. I think uh, 130 Solinco Turbite worked better. When I first tried the whiteout with the Confidential 125, it was okay on my forehand, but not so good on backhand side. So yeah, maybe thicker strings uh, are, you know, way, way to go. It just gives you this a little bit more control, uh, tame a little bit down this launch uh, angle, uh, but still you can retain this spin potential, uh, which is great. So the biggest difference I think between those two is the level of control and the level of performance, always balancing game. And so when I was competing, I noticed right away that uh, I am winning easier with the 1619 whiteout. The 1820, while giving me more control, it was also easier for the opponent to attack uh, the ball back. I had to play my better game in order to use the whiteout 1820 to max potential, while the 1619 is just more forgiving. You can play better while having a worse day. So, like I said, I need different tools uh, to work with while competing. You never know uh, what's your level gonna be. So, level level, level and go with the 1619 whiteout. Maybe it is also worth comparing the White House 1619 uh, to the Gravity Tour, upcoming Gravity Tour um, 1619, because both are relatively hotter in response and uh, wider in the string spacing. Uh, yeah, quite similar spacing. Uh, at the bottom, I see. I see that uh, the White House uh, is uh, a bit wider bigger boxes over here. Gravity Tour is kind of trying to maintain 
the distance uh, between the strings. So it makes sense that whiteout in theory should be shooting a bit higher and helping a bit more, but uh, it also depends uh, on the stiffness. Um, sometimes softer rackets can actually shoot a bit higher because the dwell time and pocketing um, is uh, a bit enhanced. So if you kind of uh, accelerate a bit too much upwards, uh, the ball sticks to the racket a bit longer and it kind of uh, gets your intention of hitting higher. So that's how uh, I understand, that's my imagination of how uh, the launch angle could increase with softer racket. Sometimes uh, you just have to focus if the racket is soft and uh, has a wide string uh, spacing, you just have to focus on this linear motion of your hand. Just focus on your wrist while you want to uh, apply spin, not just from your whole hand. Otherwise, it will just shoot off too high. Something totally different with the uh, low-powered 1820 uh, rackets where you just have to explode with everything you have in order to keep the ball a bit higher above the net. So yeah, it depends on your swing style, I would say. Many ways to achieve similar things. You can make the racket softer, but make the beam thicker. Something that, something that had made with the uh, speed line. Uh, in the past, speed was like 22 millimeters and now it's 23. So yeah, that's, that's quite interesting. But in the past, uh, the graphene speed Pro was actually like 68 stiffness, now it's like 62, something like that. I would still prefer whiteout 16, 19 and 1820 to be a bit uh, softer in feel. I think that it would both improve the feel and performance. Yeah, I actually prefer longer dwell times usually, so maybe it's just me. But uh, when it comes to winning, 1619 whiteout uh, is a great choice. Yeah, sometimes you just have to sacrifice some of the feel just to get more performance. Uh, sometimes it is worth it, sometimes not. So yeah, guys, subscribe if you can, it helps me grow and uh, see you soon, bye.